Thank you for staying with us. Quite uh, an interesting conversation, Alera, there. Very. And Nigerians are still Very. tweeting in. Stephen Abolo says, until the entire police is reformed, the police will continue to rot. SARS will go and another will come. The regular police does so much evil on our roads and highways, reform the police entirely. Well, John Wright says that I think the problem is first to change the name from police, Nigeria Police Force to Nigeria Police Service. It will help Nigerians a lot. I think, that some, I think that name's been changed. At, is your, at well, it's not at force Nigeria anymore. Police. It's just Nigeria Police. Nigeria Police. So yes. he's, but I he's think, saying you should put service uh, there. Service there. So, so, so they will be aware that they're actually serving Nigerians. Like the correctional, so the Nigeria Correctional Service. It's no longer <laughs> Nigeria Prisons. Okay. All right. Um, well, today, um, let's look at other things now. Today happens to be the World Hospice and Palliative Care Day, a day to celebrate and support hospice palliative care around the world. The theme for this event is my care, my comfort. But the question is, how much awareness is raised on hospice and palliative care? Now, some people might be asking, what exactly do you mean by hospice? What's palliative care? English, don't worry, you'll get to know. So we have as our guest, <laughs> Professor Olaiton Soyongwo. Um, who is a retired professor of anesthesia and has been leading pain relief and development of palliative care in the country international since, and internationally since the 90s. He is based at the UCH Ibado, a visiting consultant and runs an NGO, the Center for Palliative Care Nigeria. Thank you for speaking with us, Prof. Good morning. And thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for inviting me. So let's start out real quick with this. Um, as I said earlier, some people will be asking, what exactly is hospice and palliative care? Can we start from there? Thank you very much. Um, palliative care is a specialized type of care that is designed for people who have serious life-limiting illnesses. It, uh, the movement to establish it started in the 60s with cancer, but now uh, it is applicable to all forms of serious illnesses. The purpose of palliative care is to improve the quality of life of people across all ages that are facing the challenges of pain and suffering from serious and chronic illnesses. Not just cancer, but illnesses like neurological problems, stroke, complications from diabetes, hypertension, even those with congenital problems like uh, sickle cell disease, because this kind of illnesses are protracted and they go on for a long time. And palliative care starts from the diagnosis of such illnesses and improves the quality of life both the patient and their families and caregivers and stays with them till end of life and beyond including bereavement support. That in a nutshell is what palliative care is. Then so, at the tail end, yes. Yeah, this, this sounds like it's a very important part of medicine. Um, how is it that um, Many people don't seem to be aware of it. That is the problem. And that is why the world body, Global Alliance for Palliative Care, which consists of about 350 organizations in over 100 countries, has set a day aside every year on 10th October 
so that awareness can be raised, so that all those who have had such problems and those who have been impacted by their experience can all come together and talk to policy, talk to the public, talk to everybody worldwide, so that uh, policies can be developed to include palliative care within the health services and health development plans in every country. Unfortunately, this aspect of medicine has also not been included in the curriculum for uh, training of medical and allied health professionals. And in Nigeria in particular, it's only recently that palliative care is being focused on and we now have a society for hospice and palliative care and few tertiary institutions that are now trying to train people so that palliative care can be included in our national health care delivery on a practical basis. Okay, Prof. Introducing this into the, the curriculum um, for training of our medical personnel, do you think it will make any difference as regards the understanding and actually taking part in this, um, in offering palliative care to those in need? Yes, that on a long-term basis will make it possible. But currently, all those health and allied healthcare workers who are already on ground have been encouraged to do continuum medical education in this aspect of medicine, and that is now ongoing in the country. Okay. Palliative care is also for, not just for healthcare workers, because you also need volunteers and you need other people to also help all those, including uh, carers, caregivers, they also have to be trained, and the public, because we are all related to people who are suffering from these illnesses, and education is very important all around. So, Professor, how does um, the um, hospice and palliative people like yourself, how do you go about recruiting um, caregivers and volunteers? Thank you very much. Palliative care involves teamwork. So we have multidisciplinary health professionals like doctors, nurses, pharmacies, physiotherapists. And then in places where it is offered, you can recruit volunteers and uh, because they volunteer. The volunteers can help the patients and the caregivers also have to be trained to know exactly how to take care of the patients that they are related to. For example, the patient uh, may have to go for frequent hospital visits and they need somebody to take them up and down. They also may have challenges of pain and so many other distressing problems. Uh, and they need both healthcare professionals, and also the carers who will be with them to provide compassionate care. Because palliative care can be offered not only in hospitals, it can also be offered in the community, within the home of the patient. And then at the end of life, we have standalone hospices. In developed countries, this cater for patients that have uh, six months to one year to live. But palliative care should actually be embedded in the care of every patient that has serious illness that's in hospital, especially the communication aspect of it. A lot of patients, they don't know 
the details, the medical details about what is wrong with them. And that gives them a lot of problem because they now go around different places spending money on curative intent, whereas what is wrong with them cannot really be killed, but they can be managed in such a way that they can live quality life right till the end of their lives. This matter, um, palliative care for generally for the society, and would days like this, remembering or commemorating days like this, World Hospice and Palliative Care Day, how as important as it is, apparently a lot of people still are not used to it. So what should we begin to do going forward to ensure that beyond this year, beyond this year, Nigerians and indeed the society begins to take care of those around us because that will be the other side of this entire conversation. Yes, thank you very much. The World Health Association, the World, World Health Organization, actually has set out criteria for developing palliative care as part of uh, community health or public health. And there are three pillars. The first pillar is policy. Once there's policy that this has to be part of the healthcare delivery system in any country, then it happens. And Nigeria is signatory to a lot of the, um, and is aware, a lot of the uh, guidelines on palliative care. The second one is education of everybody that will be involved in making this happen, including the public, and that's why I'm talking today, but, uh, health professionals, non-health professionals. And then the third one is availability of essential medications that be required. In most countries, these, country, these medications are available except for the strong medications that we need to treat severe pain, uh, which are strictly controlled because they are under the Dangerous Drugs Act. But they can be made available for medical use when it is required, so that people who are dying from serious illnesses don't have to die in pain. They can be in comfort and they can enjoy the remaining part of their lives once they don't have pain. And that is what palliative care preaches. It also preaches total care, men, men, uh, the emotional aspect of illness, the social aspect of illness, and the spiritual aspect. And when I say spiritual, I don't mean religious. Uh, and that is why we have chaplains who can join the palliative care team to also cater for some of these needs. Now, Professor, um, normally when you talk about hospice, you, you, you think about a place. Um, maybe you can... Um, uh, interchange that word in our own um, environment with old people's home. What is the connection? The, uh, thank you very much. That's a very pertinent question. And I always say that palliative care is not about the dying, but it is about those who are living with serious illnesses and they die from these illnesses because a lot of the illnesses are incurable. Now, uh, all people's homes are meant for old people, but palliative care is needed by children. Children, for example, also have cancer. Children have neurological illnesses, and all people also have this. So it cuts across the whole trajectory of life. Then, um, Hospice care caters for that end of life when people are actually having a lot of problems with a lot of symptoms. Some of them, they're incontinent, or they, they can't control their urine, they cannot uh, remember things, 
they cannot walk properly. So they have a lot of issues and they, it is difficult for their families to look after them. And in our environment, these days it is happening. We never used to see such things because of the extended family uh, uh, that we had and we are our neighbors keepers. But now with global migration, a lot of people now have their children and their relatives living so far away from them that they can not look after them when they have these issues. And that is why we must now include this kind of care in a medical and health care system so that it is available not just at the tertiary level of care, but at the secondary and at the primary care level. And this will involve teaching everybody that works along those ones and also to make budget available. And palliative care should also be uh, among our considerations when we talk about sustainable uh, goals and also whatever we are uh, we are designing so that uh, it's global for those in rural and also for those in urban areas. Now, now Prof, um, World Hospice and Palliative Care Day, what exactly is planned to mark that day? We have planned a lot of ad uh, advocacy outings. Um, in Ibadan, for example, we have been addressing the public over radio uh, and we are using the media and part of our, and since three days ago, and uh, in these days of uh, Zoom, we also have had some special lectures on Zoom so that uh, the outreach will be more and a lot of people. And this is happening all over the country because we now have members of the Hospice and Palliative Care Association all over the geopolitical zones of Nigeria. And internationally, for the first time, what is happening is mostly virtual because of the COVID pandemic. And COVID also has its ramifications. And just like HIV AIDS that requires a lot of palliative care input, this COVID also requires palliative care. Uh, and post-COVID, especially for those who have had serious um, challenges from the illness, they will also require palliative care. Thank you very much. Professor Olayton Shoyangwo is a consultant, retired professor of anesthesia, and she joined us from UCH in Ibadan. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you.